start them, sit them. We're going to get to those uh, position by position, starting with the quarterback starts first. And Mr. Joe Burrow, who you think we should plug into our lineups this week. Yeah, and, and Joe Burrow has not been great lately, but he did have <laughs> 17 points last week. And the matchup is just so good. I mean, since the start of last season, Linz, the commanders have allowed 18 plus points to quarterbacks 14 times, including 11 quarterbacks who have had more than 20. So, I mean, like it don't get much better than that from a matchup perspective. So Joe Burrow has got to be in your lineup and then Derek Carr. I, I was wrong about him last week. You know, maybe it was because it was against my beloveds. He smoked us for almost 22. The saints offense is scored 91 points in the first two weeks. The Eagles have allowed the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks since the start of last season. Everything points to Derek Carr being a really good play this week. Yeah, Derek Carr, QB2 on the season so far with 43 Insane. fantasy points. Behind, mm -hmm. of course, Baker Mayfield, who's our QB1 so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who are we sitting? We, we, are, we are in the bizarro world. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I get it. Like, I mean, he was the, you know, first overall pick and he got a big contract, but he hadn't been good. He scored 24.6 points in his first two games this year. He's failed to score more than 15 points in six straight games dating back to last year. The Bills have allowed an average of fewer than 13 points per game to quarterbacks in Buffalo since last year. Bye-bye, Trevor Lawrence. And um, yeah, that's also on a Monday night. Remember, there's two games on Monday this week, folks. And then Justin Herbert, who Lindsay just talked about as coming back to practice, but Last week against Carolina, smash bot, lousy game, 11 points, 21.4 points in his first two games. He's got Pittsburgh on the road. Uh, they've given up an average of fewer than 14 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks at the big catch-up bottle, I guess formerly known as the big catch-up bottle, since last year. So I'm sitting Justin Herbert. Really low volume passing attack there in Los Angeles this season, which we knew. We knew that it was going to be that way. He ranks 28th so far in terms of pass attempts, having attempted to throw the ball 46 times this year. What about our running backs? Who are we starting there? Zach Charbonnet. Sounds like a fine wine, right? Charbonnet? It does. No, that's Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. But anyways, if Ken Walker don't play, then this Charbonnet needs to be in your fantasy glass. Uh, yeah, that was really bad. But last <laughs> week, he dominated the touches. He saw all 19 of Seattle's backfield looks. The Dolphins are awful against the run. They've allowed the six most points to running backs after two weeks. So Zach Charbonnet is in my top 10 and he's my start of the week at running back. Uh, and then okay. David Montgomery, like this guy, yeah, I've got him at 10. David Montgomery is like not getting the respect he deserves for being the solid fantasy back that he is. Everybody talks about Jameer Gibbs. David Montgomery has been phenomenal. He's averaging almost 17 points in his first two games. He's got the Cardinals this week. Uh, no defense has given up more fantasy points to visiting running backs, which means what? When running backs come to the desert, they normally eat. So start David Montgomery. All right. Who are we not starting? Najee Harris. I, and I liked him last week and I was wrong against Denver. It was a good matchup, but Jalen Warren ended up being uh, a bigger part of that offense that we had seen in week one. And now you've got a matchup against the Chargers who've allowed an average of fewer than 19 points to running backs over the first two weeks. Uh, so Najee is going to be a sit. And then DeAndre Swift, you could pull out any advanced metric you want, and that'll give you enough reason to sit him. I mean, look, look at his numbers, 6.6 .6 points per game. He's averaging two yards per rush. His EPA is minus 11.1. That's fifth worst in the NFL among running backs. And even though the matchup's not bad, I mean, DeAndre Swift is a risk-reward flex at best. All right, let's get to the wide receivers, Fabs. Who who yeah, here that we maybe otherwise might not obviously start, should we, this week? Yeah, Brandon Ike's been bad. I mean, 13.1 combined points. But remember, slow start, yep. didn't yep. play in the preseason, didn't play in training camp, was holding out, and now Debo, bye-bye, which means that Ayuk should lead this team in targets or at least be in the top two, maybe with George Kittle. Uh, Rams this week, they've given up big stat lines to Jameson Williams, who I'm going to talk about, and Harrison Jr., uh, the rookie there in Arizona. So, this is a good spot for Brandon Ayuk to have his breakout party in 2024. And then I mentioned Jamison Williams. L listen, 38.8 combined fantasy points. He was my favorite, uh, one of my favorite sleepers going into the season. And so far, he's looked really good. This looks like a barn burner potentially in the desert. Arizona's a lot, 11 touchdowns and the 10th most fantasy points to perimeter receivers since the start of last year. Again, high scoring game, start Jamison Williams. As for the guys that were not starting... 
Uh, are yeah, we looking and, at some of those Dolphins assets? Yeah, a couple of dudes that you probably got to play, but boy, these are going to be bad matchups. And well, for Jalen Waddle, it's not about the matchup. His quarterback is just not good. All right. His career completion percentage, Skylar Thompson, 57.1. In three games where he's thrown at least 21 passes, Waddle has a combined 11 catches for 119 yards and no touchdowns in those games with Skylar Thompson under center. And he ain't going to turn into Dan Marino overnight. I, I don't even have Jalen Waddle in my top 25 at wide receiver. And I've got Tyreek Hill out of my top 10 at wide receiver. So uh, call me scurred and playing in Seattle. That ain't easy with all the, the, the 12th man crowd and all the noise there. And then I've got Drake London on the list. And listen, I get it. He had a big game last week, but we projected that because the Eagles defense stinks. Now he's got the chiefs. They just held Jamar chase in check. Uh, perimeter receivers have scored just nine touchdowns and average a third fewest fantasy points against them. So I, I know it's hard to sit Drake London and who knows, maybe this game ends up being a shootout, but Kansas city's defense has been really tough on perimeter receivers dating back to last year. And again, what they did to Jamar chase in week, uh, week two shows you they're still pretty good. So I would be where Drake London. He's probably a flex for me. And what about our tight ends? Who are we starting? Brock Bowers, who had a good game last week. Um, I had him in my top 12, but I didn't love him uh, against Baltimore. The only tight end in fantasy football to score double digits in the first two weeks. Not Travis Kelsey, uh, nobody except for Brock Bowers. He's played 40 plus snaps a game. Uh, Gardner Minshew has peppered him with 17 targets. He's got a good matchup this week against the Panthers. Start Brock Bowers and start Kyle Pitts. Now, I know I didn't really see much from him last week. We saw that he had kind of a stinker. But he was blocking a lot because Atlanta was having a lot of success on the ground against Philadelphia. I don't know if that's going to be the case this week. Keep this in mind. The Kansas City Chiefs in two games this year have gotten smoked by Isaiah Likely and Mike Gesicki. Yep. So this is a good spot, a good spot, excuse me, for Kyle Pitts to put up a a strong stat line. Um, Who are we sitting? Uh, Two guys that I just mentioned. First, Isaiah Likely. And uh, listen, folks, I know this is kind of low hanging fruit. I I can't in good conscience tell you to sit any tight end of any sort of value because the position is just so awful. So Isaiah likely last week came crashing back down to earth, 4.6 points, only played 32 snaps. uh, So that was down from week one. And the Cowboys have allowed the fifth fewest points at tight ends since the start of last season. So Isaiah likely uh, should be on your bench. And I mentioned Gesicki. He went off last week. You know, against Kansas City, 91 yards. He had 16.1 fantasy points. But it looks like T. Higgins has got a shot to come back. Remember, this is a Monday night game. So I don't know if you want to roll the dice with Gesicki. And then the commander's defense, and we crap on the commanders all the time. They've actually allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points at tight ends since the start of last season. That's because wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs are eating them alive. So even though Gesicki had a good game last week, I don't know that I chased the points.